David Kramer, and I'm director of the library at the Jewish Theological Seminary. I'm speaking to you here from our new rare book room in our new library, and I'd like to introduce you to something from our collection. Uh, the importance of our rare collection is not just the words that are recorded on the page, but in the records on the margins, the decorations, the artwork, uh, the many pieces of evidence that are the source of discovery, not of official Judaism, but of the real lives of Jews in earlier centuries. The piece I'd like to share with you is a manuscript which was written in France in the early 13th century, very important manuscript of a work called the Machsor Vitri, completed by an authority by the name of Simcha Vitri, died in about 1105. He was a colleague, student of Rashi. And in this work, we've got the earliest record of the practices of Ashkenazi Jews in the Middle Ages. What's fascinating about this work uh, is not just its record of those practices, but what we learn from this particular manuscript about the real lives of Jews in France at this time. If you take a look at the first page, you'll see three columns of carefully written Hebrew, clearly written by a scribe. Uh, and if you focus on the bottom of the page, you'll see something quite expected. Uh, as we look at it closely, we see this is unmistakably a fleur-de-lis. Uh, the fleur-de-lis, which was a very popular symbol in Europe, particularly in France, was already at this time a symbol of French royalty. Why is there a fleur-de-lis in the margin of an otherwise halachic written by Jews for Jews. Well, it's suggestive, but uh, what we can't avoid is the possibility that here we've got a Jewish scribe writing in Hebrew who is nevertheless expressing his French identity. When we turn to the next page, uh, we'll see that this suspicion is well-founded because when we look at the page as a whole, first of all, you see that on the top, you've got the scribe's signature uh, the scribe's name was Eliezer Berebi Shmuel. That's written in very large letters, themselves composed of extremely small letters. This is micrography, which was the only unique form of Jewish art in the Middle Ages. And here you've got a fine example. But when you look at the bottom of the page, you'll see something a little bit rougher, uh, sketches, of certain scenes. So if you focus on the left, you'll see a composite of three figures, uh, a man, even possibly a soldier, riding on horseback with sword drawn. To his left, you'll see a deer who is about to be slaughtered by the hunter. And then at the bottom, you've got another gentleman who is evidently blowing a horn this seems to be a hunting scene. What could be more French and medieval than a grand scene of the hunt uh, with the catch uh, right at hand? If you turn your focus to the right side of the page, uh, you'll see some birds. Uh, they're obviously peacocks, but I refer to them as the lovebirds of this manuscript. If we put all of this together, we can see that it has nothing to do with Jewish practice, uh, has nothing to do with being Jewish at all. But again, like the fleur de lis on the earlier page, you've got an expression of French identity. Here, once again, we've got evidence of the Frenchness of Jews living in France in the early 13th century. We turn to the last page. There's no picture, no image, but there's clearly something significant. If you look in the right column, here we've got the piece of this manuscript that describes the practices of a Jewish wedding. At the top, in very small letters, you've got a description of the fact that after the official ceremony, there's supposed to be a celebration. And in the large letters, you've got record of a wedding poem. This is the only record of this particular wedding poem. It's clearly meant to illustrate what you do at a wedding. That is to say, you recite poems, you sing songs, you rejoice. Poem is very, very interesting. 
If you look carefully, you may be able to make out that the first letters are Hebrew, El Givat Halivona, a biblical phrase, but then in writing that's hard to make out, but clear to the expert, uh, the poem goes on and says, Notre chasen it arrive, a line written with one Hebrew word, but in French. And the poem goes on, Hebrew, French, Hebrew, French. What's going on here? When we separate the Hebrew from the French, we find something quite fascinating. The Hebrew, which is filled with double entendre, is referring to the sexual conquest of the bride by the groom on the night of their wedding. Uh, some of it's quite explicit, actually, if we understand the imagery that's intended. And then in French, we've got a romantic poem. The question is, why do you have two poems combined as one here, uh, one sexually explicit in Hebrew, uh, the other more romantic in French? Scholars who have worked on this have suggested that the Hebrew was available to the more educated men at the wedding, who may have had some Hebrew education, and the French was probably for the Jewish women assembled at the wedding. They would not have had the same kind of education, and the Hebrew probably would not have been understandable to them. But this was their language. This was their first language. Uh, and that first language expressed love and romance, uh, just as we would expect from anyone, Jew or not, in medieval France. Uh, from these three pages, we see that unlike our common conception, which is actually a misconception, uh, which leads us to believe that Jews live lives of separation in their various homes, actually we find Jews living very much at home in medieval France, speaking the language of their neighbors, absorbing uh, the cultural preferences of their neighbors, and really celebrating their Frenchness. Other manuscripts show similar phenomena in related cultures in Europe at the same time. Uh, this may be a surprise to you, but our manuscripts are a constant source of surprise. Uh, I hope you enjoyed looking at some of the detail, details of this one, and I invite you to come back for other virtual rare book room tours uh, when we will find other surprises, other discoveries in some of the rare materials in our great, great collection. Thank you for joining me. Thank you.